Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and in this video we're going to be discussing about the graphs of the fixed cost, the variable cost and the total cost. In the previous video we discussed how do we calculate these costs. In this video we're going to be focusing on the graph so make sure that you watch the video till the end and I promise you I'm going to try my best to clear your confusions. Okay guys, so first let's see how do we draw the graph of the fixed cost. We know that fixed costs are basically uh, constant over the range of output. As we increase output the fixed cost will not increase, it will stay the same. So even at an output level of zero there would still be a cost that is being incurred and that will be the fixed cost. So guys you will draw the fixed cost by a horizontal straight line right and uh, it would basically represent so it would be a horizontal line so first of all the fixed cost curve will be a horizontal line and that horizontal line would represent itself that you know the fixed costs are constant over that range of output. So how are we drawing the fixed cost curve? It's simple, a horizontal line, and um, you know, let's. I have assumed that the fixed cost is five thousand. By the way, this f you know five thousand figure has been taken from the previous video where I was calculating the cost of the pizza factory, where I assumed that the fixed cost is five thousand. So you know, even at an output level of zero units, right? Because on the x-axis we are measuring output. Even at an output level of zero units, you are still incurring a fixed cost of five thousand. And basically, let's say if this is representing, let's say, 200 units, then even at an uh, even at an output level of 200 units, you're still incurring a fixed cost of 5,000. Even at an output level of, let's say, 1,000 units, you're still incurring a fixed cost of 5,000. That is why the uh, fixed cost line would always be drawn horizontally, and it would be a horizontal straight line. That's how you draw the fixed cost. Now, guys, now let's move on to the total variable cost. And this is kind of a bit interesting. And uh, let's see how do we draw the variable cost curve. First of all, while drawing the variable cost curve, I've assumed that, um, you know, labor is the only variable uh, cost in the short run here, although there are other variable costs as well, such as raw materials, etc. But then, I mean, for the purpose of this video, just to make it simple, just to make our um, explanation simple and to make sure that you understand, I've assumed that labor is the only variable cost that the firm is incurring, just so that you can and understand the concept so guys first of all remember okay so you guys know that as you increase the output the variable cost rises that we know we all know that when you will increase the output the variable cost will rise okay fine it's clear simple the more output you produce the more variable cost will rise because obviously you know the more raw materials you will require the more labor you will require but assuming that you know labor is the only variable cost here so obviously when you increase output the more workers you need to hire the more you need to pay them obviously if you want them to make more output you need to pay them more right a simple concept so obviously variable cost will rise but but then it's not that simple here because um, having said that uh, the the difference rises regarding the shape of the variable cost so it's very important that you need to understand how to correctly draw the variable cost curve because um, although yes the more output is produced variable cost will rise but then the slope of the variable cost will differ that is the rate at which the variable cost will rise will be different over the range of output and that is simply which means that the shape is of the variable cost curve is influenced by the law of diminishing marginal returns or the law of diminishing returns basically that is what influences the shape of the variable cost curve like i said as more output is produced, the variable cost rises, but the rate at which the variable cost will rise, that is going to change. So I've taken, I'm going to be dividing the variable cost curve into two parts, that is part one and part two. So part one would represent the fact that variable cost is increasing at a decreasing rate and part two would be that variable cost is increasing at an increasing rate. So let's first see what is part one of the variable cost. So guys, if you can see, first of all, at an output level of zero units, the variable cost would be zero since no, uh, you, you don't need labor to produce any output. So obviously if zero units are produced, you won't pay the workers anything since they haven't produced anything. So you see that your uh, variable cost is increasing, right? It's increasing, it's increasing, it's increasing. And then it just keeps on increasing. So first thing we know that as more output is produced, the variable cost is rising. So if you just try to understand and you know look at the shape of the variable cost, it's just increasing. But you see that the variable cost, guys, is not increasing like this. This is not how you draw the variable cost curve. You see that the shape is kind of different because initially what's happening here is that uh, the variable cost is increasing, but the slope or the, or, the, or the rate at which the variable cost is increasing is basically decreasing. So you see that the variable cost is rising. You see that, you know, the variable cost rises, it rises, but then again, the slope falls, right, because the curve gets flat, it becomes shallow, it becomes less steep. So whenever the curve becomes flat, it becomes shallow or it becomes less steep, it simply means that the rate of increase in variable cost is falling. And then from this point onwards, we see 
that the variable cost then starts rising at a much faster rate or at an increasing rate so this is how you will draw the variable cost curve that is first you know in part one so basically this up till here the part one ends which means you can say that this is part one of the variable cost curve and this is part two of the variable cost curve but what is part one part two representing i'll tell you and why have i divided this into two parts i'll explain it to you that way that as well but how you will draw the variable cost curve you'll start from the origin and then you will you know make it you know um, as in you'll make it shallow as you are increasing the output the variable cost is rising but then the rate at which it is rising is constantly decreasing since the curve is you know turning itself it's as as you can see that you know it's when it's rising it's constantly becoming flatter and the slope is getting shallow which is representing where a rising variable cost but at a falling rate right but then what happens is that your variable cost from here onwards once diminishing return kicks in your variable cost starts to rise at an increasing rate so the curve becomes steep guys you see the total variable cost from this point onwards has you know started rising at a much faster rate and as you see that you're increasing your output your variable cost is going up going up going up it's going up it's going up it's going up but then the rate at which it's going up like this it's constantly increasing right so that is how you will draw the total variable cost curve now guys let's divide the variable cost curve into two parts and let's see uh, what's 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 you know actually happening here basically so what's happening here is guys that uh, first of all remember that the shape of the variable cost curve that is why does the why is the variable cost uh, shaped uh, why the slope of the variable cost is shaped uh, shallow or less steep or more flatter in part 1 is because the variable cost is basically rising at a decreasing rate right so the rate at which the variable cost is rising it's constantly falling but why why is it that your rate at of the increase in variable cost is falling it, and it's because when you're hiring more and more variable factors on the fixed factor what's happening is that workers are basically specializing they are becoming more productive they are optimally utilizing the fixed factors and there's more increasing returns to labor because of specialization and the productivity of the workers is increasing and as a result of that basically what happens is that the marginal product of the labor rises and you also saw that in the previous video as well that you know as you keep on hiring more and more labor your marginal product actually goes up uh, you know the marginal product the, so so the extra output that is produced by hiring an additional worker basically increases so so your marginal product actually increases and that actually um, you know and then and then after diminishing return kicks in it, it falls so so basically the marginal product of labor is basically increasing right so each additional worker is adding more and more to uh, your total product and since it's adding more and more to your total product so so so, so basically each so the cost of you know um, producing each additional output is going down right and which means that uh, you know the the workers are actually adding more and more to output than to cost and that is why basically the marginal cost is also going down also, although this is not uh, the topic of discussion right now we'll see about the marginal cost in the next videos but basically what's happening is that as you're hiring more and more workers so the workers so you're not required so so if you look at this curve right if you look at this if you look at this on the y axis the basically it's representing cost and you see if you see the slope at these let's say these two points if you want to just calculate the slope at these two points you see that you know um, slope is basically your change in y over change in x so your change in y which is representing the variable cost is less right the change in cost is less while the change in output is more right which is telling us that you know um, if you want to increase output then you need to add less variable cost so the addition to the variable cost so the increase in variable cost will be less than the increase in output and since the increase in variable cost will be less than the increase in output your your marginal cost will fall and basically that is why the variable cost is increasing at a decreasing rate and that's simply because of specialization and division of labor and since the marginal product of workers is basically increasing so workers are adding more to output than to cost and this means so basically this just means that you know we don't we don't need to increase a lot of wages to experience a greater increase in output so if you want to increase output we don't really need to pay them a lot of wages or we it's not that we need to increase a lot of wages in order to increase output and the simple reason is that you know using the same wages using the same resources more output is being produced so there's this kind of you can say the input cost is as compared to the output cost that ratio is falling right so output is more than you know the increase in output is more than the increase in cost 
So each worker is basically adding more and more to output than to cost for the firm. Hence the rise in output, th that is why I've written that the rise in output is more than the rise in the, in the labor cost or the variable cost. So the rise in variable cost is less than the rise in output or the rise in output is more than the rise in variable cost. Why? Because of productivity gains, because of specialization, right? So the marginal product of labor, we're experiencing increasing returns to labor. And that is why this can, or this, this is, and, and, and basically that's why we say that as we add more variable factors, we know that, you know, you know your, 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 your marginal product goes up before diminishing return can in and then you know it, it goes down remember we studied that in the previous video so so basically your marginal product is going up which is telling us that you know each additional worker is adding more and more to output you know each additional worker is adding more and more to output um, so basically as compared to the previous worker right so because of the addition of extra workers because of the addition of variable factors they're specializing and labor productivity is rising so because of the addition of each additional worker more additional output is produced um, you know from before and that results into increasing returns to labor and that results and that is basically the result of specialization or division of labor this is optimally they're utilizing the fixed factors and that is why the variable cost, yes, obviously, if you're producing more, you need to pay them more. But then if you compare what you're, if you compare the increase in the payment that you will make to them, as in the increase in the variable cost or the increase in the wage cost, since we're assuming that wage is the only variable factor, as in the wage is the only variable cost. So that increase in the wage cost is less than the increase in output, which means that, okay, fine, you're paying them more because you're producing more, but then, you know, within, so the extent to which you're paying them more, if you compare that to the extent of the output that is generated against that, you know, um, increase in payments is much more. And that is why the, the, the variable cost is rising at a, at a you know, at a slower rate, right? And that is why we say that, you know, the variable cost is rising at a decreasing rate or a falling rate. And since variable cost is rising at a decreasing rate, we say, we say that marginal cost is falling, right? Since you, we know that what marginal cost is, marginal cost is basically the change in total cost divided by change in the quantity of output. But remember that fixed costs are constant, so we can also write this formula as change in variable cost upon change in output. We, we, we already studied in the previous videos that marginal, that marginal cost is a change in total cost, right? The extra cost. So the so when you increase your output, the extra cost that you incur is only the variable cost because fixed cost is the same. So you don't incur any extra fixed cost. That's, that's just the same as, uh, you know, that was when you produced zero units or one unit or whatever, right? W whatever units you produce. So the change in cost or the additional cost that you incur would obviously be the variable cost. That is why, you know, if you calculate the change in variable cost, that is actually, and divide that by the change in quantity, that is actually the marginal cost, right? So... So we know that uh, since variable cost is rising at a falling rate or decreasing rate, your marginal cost is falling, right? And your marginal product is increasing, right? So they are actually quite linked together, but I'm gonna be linking marginal cost and marginal product in my next video. Anyways, so in part one, what's happening is that, you know, the, the slope of the variable cost curve is basically shallow. That means that it is less steep. In fact, it's more flattened outwards. So it's increasing at a decreasing rate, right? So and then and then we see that you know um, the part one basically ends over here, and then the variable cost starts to increase. The, the 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 slope makes a turn, and then it just you know it just keeps on rising. It keeps on rising. The slope keeps on rising. It becomes more and more steep. So the increase in variable cost basically becomes, um, you know, the, the variable cost starts to rise at a faster rate. And this is because of the, of the diminishing return that kicks in. So in part two, what I'm telling us, I'm telling you guys is that a variable cost curve becomes steeper. It becomes steep. So which means that the variable cost here is um, incre the, the variable cost rises basically at an increasing rate. And that is due to the diminishing return that kicks in. So the fixed factors become a constraint on your variable factors, right? You're over-utilizing, your over-utilization of fixed factors taking place because, uh, because you just keep keeping on adding those variable factors on fixed factors, they become a burden on your, they, they become a constraint on your fixed factors. And then your marginal product uh, basically falls. So the labor experiences diminishing returns to labor. And that is where your marginal product falls and your marginal cost rises. So what happens is that over here, your variable cost would uh, basically increase at a much faster rate. So here what's happening is that the labor productivity goes down. So the productivity of the workers falls. 
and now what's happening is that since the productivity of the workers fall if you want to increase output and since labor is unproductive or more inefficient since it's unproductive so the same labor will produce less output as before so obviously if you need to produce more output you know you 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 need to pay them more you need to you know you need to pay them more you need to hire more workers because the labor is unproductive right and we are experiencing decreasing returns to labor so so the and having said that what happens is that you need to pay workers more for in order to increase the you know in order to increase a certain rate if you want to increase output at a certain rate you need to pay them more as before so basically now what happens is that um you know workers we could say in an alternative way as well that workers are basically adding more and more to cost than to output so so basically if you if so so we know that if you're increasing output you your variable cost rises but here the variable cost is rising rising at a much faster rate and the reason is that workers are adding instead of adding more to output they're adding more to cost so so if you compare the cost with output they're adding more to cost than to output so yes output is rising it's not that the output is not rising but the output is rising at a slower rate as compared to the cost that is rising at a much faster rate so the increase in cost is more than the increase in output and that is why you we say that your variable cost just curve gets steeper because if you see if you look at this if you look at this slope right if you look at this slope right if you look at you know if you want to calculate the slope over here you see that you know the in if you want to compare this right i mean the the change in the y axis is more than the change the change in the y axis which is the change in cost the change in variable cost is more than the change in your x axis and it just keeps on getting worse because the curve will get you know steeper and steeper and as the curve gets steeper and steeper the increase in cost is more than the increase in output which simply means that in order to produce a higher output the firm needs to incur ever increasing amount of variable cost right and that's why the marginal cost just keeps on rising so that is why we say that the that the shape of the variable cost is actually determined due to the law of diminishing returns because what's happening is that if firms want to now since diminishing return kicks in the productivity of the workers goes down and if the productivity of the workers goes down if firms want to increase output they need to pay workers more and more in order to increase the same output right so basically what's happening here is that you know it's a it's a it's a messed up situation because you just keep on adding workers you just keep on paying them more but the increase in output is less than the increase in cost so the because the labor productivity is going down now and the marg and that is why we say the marginal product falls so basically what happens is that because of the addition of each additional worker the extra output that is produced just keeps on falling and that is why your marginal product just keeps on declining remember this graph marginal product keeps on declining and that is because of the decreasing returns to labor and because of lab falling labor productivity because of once your diminishing return kicks in and so so basically and that is why we say that you know your variable cost here is basically rising at an increasing rate so your marginal cost is basically rising and if your marginal cost is rising your marginal product is going down right your marginal cost is rising your marginal product is going down because each additional worker is adding more to cost than to than to output right so that is why we say that your variable cost just keeps on rising at a faster rate so i mean you know in this portion in this portion where the variable cost curve gets steeper right in this portion where you know from from here onwards you you see that your you know this is this is flat but then it just from this point onwards it starts getting steep right and and then it just keeps on worsening i mean it gets steeper and steeper so the variable cost curve becoming steeper is not a good sign i mean it's it's simply telling us because we are measuring output on the x axis and cost on the you know on the y axis and if you're if you're basically trying to calculate the slope right if if you're calculating the slope it's simply telling us that you know for this increase in output for this increase in output for for this increase in output because this is representing increase in outputs so for this increase in output right change in output or increase in output i mean this much increase in variable cost is is required or this much increase in variable cost is happening right and that is because the workers are unproductive i mean you need to pay them more to increase this increase this you know increase a little amount of output so 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 basically that is the reason why 
your uh, variable cost curve becomes steeper because of diminishing returns. And sim obviously, because of diminishing returns, the the um, the output, uh, the extra, the margin product is falling. The ex the because of the diminishing returns, um, because of hiring of each additional worker, the workers are becoming unproductive, and the fixed factors are becoming a constraint. So each um, because of the hiring of the each additional worker the the marginal output or the marginal product uh, just keeps on falling and that results into the variable cost curve becoming steeper in the second part after diminishing return kicks in representing that the rate at which the variable cost is rising is getting is, is basically increasing so guys that was the variable cost and now let's move on to total cost total cost is basically simply the sum of fixed cost and variable cost and okay guys so now you need to understand that when you're talking about the shape of the total cost curve, the total cost, the shape of the total cost curve, or the way that you will draw the total cost curve will be exactly like the shape of the variable cost curve. The simple reason is why will the shape of total cost uh, represent. Now when you talk about the shape of variable cost or the shape of total cost, the shape is, why, we, why am I constantly emphasizing on the shape? Because the shape is representing the rate at which the variable cost is rising or the total cost is rising and the rate at which uh, the, the, that is the rate at which the variable cost is rising at a slower or a faster rate. So that shape is important because the shape is representing a lot. The shape is the reason why, I mean, the diminishing returns is the reason why, you know, uh, is the reason behind the shape of the variable and the total cost. So the total cost curve takes exactly the same shape as the total variable cost curve. And the simple reason is that fixed costs are cha aren't changing. Fixed cost is constant. Since fixed cost is constant and it doesn't change itself, so the only cost that changes is variable cost, right? And we know that as you increase output after diminishing returns, the variable cost increases at an increasing rate, right? So if fixed cost is the same and if variable cost is increasing, and, and now guys, li li listen to this very carefully. If fixed cost is the same, I'm gonna repeat this. If fixed cost is the same, and variable cost increases at an increasing rate, which obviously means that now total cost will also increase at an increasing rate. Because the increasing rate part is for the variable cost, not the fixed cost. Is this the same? Fixed cost, fixed cost will not have even increase at all. It's, it's constant. So, and since variable cost initially increases at a decreasing rate, so variable cost curve is shallow or flattened, a bit flatter initially, so total cost curve will be also be flatter. Once variable cost increases at an increasing rate, and then it becomes the variable cost curve becomes steep, total cost curve will also become steep. So total cost curve follows the same shape as the variable cost curve. So guys, if I'm drawing a total cost curve, basically what I'll do is, first of all, you need to understand from where will I start total cost. I will start total cost from this point. Why? Because adds, if the output is zero, so your total cost will exactly be equal to the fixed cost. Because even if you're not producing anything, you will still pay the fixed cost. So the total cost curve starts from the point where your fixed cost line starts. So, so basically, and then it takes exactly the same shape as the variable cost curve. So basically, so how you need to draw this? You need to draw this exactly like, you know, you have drawn the variable cost curve. So this is how you draw the total cost curve. You see that here total cost is basically rising, rising, and then the slope, you know, just keeps on decreasing, which means that, you know, the total cost is rising at a decreasing rate. So we, so here we see that total cost is rising at a decreasing rate. Since total cost is rising at a decreasing rate, it's rising at a falling rate. It means that marginal cost is falling because marginal cost is simply the change in total cost over output, right? But then hang on a second. I also said the same thing over variable cost. So obviously marginal, marginal cost is the extra cost incurred. So the extra cost is the extra cost incurred would obviously be the variable cost. So whether you want to call marginal cost as a change in total cost over quantity, over the change in quantity, or you want to call marginal cost and change in variable cost over quantity is just the same thing because the fixed cost isn't changing, right? So if you're taking the change in total cost, the change would be the change in the variable cost, not the fixed cost, right? That is why. And that is why total cost curve, it takes exactly the same shape as the variable cost curve. And then you see that total cost just, you know, you know, after, after this part, you know, after this part, after this, uh, from here onwards, we see that my, my uh, you know, variable cost uh, starts increasing at an increasing rate, and so does my total cost starts increasing at an increasing rate, right? Understood? So basically, if you say that why is total cost rising, if, if I ask you a simple question, why is total cost rising if more output is produced? Simply because variable cost is rising. Since fixed cost is the same, right? Fixed cost is the same at zero units, is the same at 100 units or a billion units, right? So basically what I'm saying is 
that um, if your total cost is rising, that is because of your variable cost is rising, not because of your fixed cost. Fixed cost is the same. So that is why total cost also takes the shape of the, your fixed cost. At times, you know, in your MCQs, they ask you if output is zero, so total cost, the value of total cost would exactly be equal to the fixed cost. So, you know, at an output level of zero, your total cost will equal the fixed cost and the total cost curve will be drawn above the variable cost curve. The vertical distance between total cost and variable cost represents fixed cost. So yeah, this is something I wanted to tell you that the vertical distance between your total cost and your fixed cost, this vertical distance, you know, at each level of output, this vertical distance is representing your fixed cost, right? And the fixed cost will be constant. So let's say if, if this is maybe, you know, at an output level of 100 units, let's say, you know, my, my fixed cost is, you know, let's say, 5,000 and my total cost, sorry, my variable cost is uh, how much it's, let's say, it's maybe, I don't know, somewhere it's 7,000, let's say. So the value of my, the value of my total cost should be 7 plus 7,000 plus 5,000, and that should be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12,000, right? So, so the value of total cost will be 12,000. And if I were to calculate this vertical distance, this vertical distance is basically my fixed cost because this value is 12,000 while this value is 7,000. So if I deduct 12,000 from 7,000, I'll get my fixed cost that is 5,000. Yeah, so that's about it, guys. What's important after, after in this video is that you need to understand the shapes of the total cost and the variable cost curves. First of all, fixed cost will be drawn as a horizontal line. Your variable cost will start from origin it will increase at a decreasing rate and then it becomes basically it will start increasing at an increasing rate this is how you draw your variable cost curve your total cost will follow the same shape as your variable cost curve and this is how you draw your total cost curve as well it will start from the line of the fixed cost and the vertical distance between these two uh, curves is representing your fixed cost so yeah that's about it remember that um, if you say that your variable cost is initially rising at a falling rate it or you say that your total cost is rising at a falling rate because obviously the, the, the shape of the total cost is determined by the shape of the variable cost. So the addition cost is the, you know, the addition to the total cost is basically the variable cost. Remember, addition to total cost is the variable cost. So because of these reasons, your marginal cost is falling. It's just the same. And if your variable cost is rising at a rising rate, or you can say that your total cost is rising at a rising rate. In this case, your marginal cost will be rising. And we'll cover this in the coming, I mean, in, in the next video, I'll be covering the marginal cost and the average cost and all of that. So total cost is rising basically at a decreasing rate. Your marginal cost is falling. After diminishing return kicks in, total cost rises at an increasing rate. Marginal cost is basically increasing. So that's about it. I hope you understood this video and enjoyed it as well. If you did, please let me know in the comment section. I hope to see you all in the next video. Until then, take care.